Okay, so we write about this example last week. So today we are going to talk about the computer-based information system. So <clears throat> as you can remember, we discuss about the uh, manual information system and what are the drawbacks of those things, right? So when an information system is uh, happening manually, there are many things for them to uh, handle, right? It takes time. Sometimes data duplications can be happen, human errors can be happen. There will be uh, insertion uh, problems, uh, the deletion problems, the updating problems, right? And uh, this data duplicating uh, will lead to the uh, data integrity issues, accuracy issues, right? There are many, many uh, disadvantages that we are having uh, when we're dealing with a some particular uh, system which is happening manually. Now, instead of that, we can uh, establish a computer-based information system which will help us to detect anything if it goes wrong or like uh, any human errors can be avoided like almost every human error like we can't we can't say like every like all the human errors can be eliminated through the uh, computer based information system but most of them can be eliminated and uh, error percentage can be minimized when we are like dealing with an information system which is a computer based one right so in that case these kind of things can be done when the computer system based on a computer and what they have given here is some of the uh, things that we can do when a library information system happens as a computer based one right so as it says ability to detect uh, whether a particular book is available the book availability maintain an issue in the receipts right uh, calculate the fines for the late returns right and searching facilities as well as many different things right so as it says ability to maintain records of uh, these particular things right or like uh, regarding the library so there are many things that we can maintain right so like as a summary it will help us to get rid of the things Okay, Pehara, yes, Pehara is saying that she can't uh, hear anything. Is it same for the others? Yeah, or is it me? Uh, is it clear, Dua, or is it like? Uh... Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, I think uh, the problem lies with the Pehara. Pehara, can you hear me now? Is it clear, loud and clear? <clears throat> Pehara, can you hear me now? Right, great, okay. So let's write about the computer-based information systems. So have the head in computer-based information systems. Write down this particular sentence that will be enough people.
And regarding the examples, <clears throat> you can go with this and uh, yeah, you may write uh, these four things. That will be enough. You don't need to write the entire list. Let me know when you are done, people.
Okay. <clears throat> One is done. How about others? Anyone who is still writing? Okay, Dino. Let me know when you're done. Okay, Udamia, let me know when you're done. All right, anyone who is still writing? Okay, let's move forward. So yeah, 
This explains the main differences between manual system and a computer-based information system, which you may already know about this, right? So like errors are minimal with data processed by a computer program and uh, the manual system, it is since the data is manually processed, there is more room for errors, right? So in a computer-based system, data can be processed more efficiently. Here, the manual system, it will be a little bit, not a little bit actually, it, it will have less efficiency, right? And the large amount of data can be stored in a small physical space, but here you need files, cupboards and all these things to store a large amount of data. Security wise, can be applied many different securities like password, usernames, access privileges kind of things. But for manual system, it is just a lock which we can uh, use inside a particular uh, Almira or a cupboard. So I want you to write this at home. So please mark it as a small homework. The page number is page number 56. So in page number 56, main differences between manual system and computer-based information system. Right, mark it, everyone. Right, <clears throat> so with that, we are going to the main topic, which is called the system development process, right? So this system development process is generally described by a methodology called system development life cycle, right? This will explain what kind of, a, what kind of paces or what kind of steps that we need to go through when we need to develop a particular process, right? So system development life cycle ensure things in this manner, right? So it says the development process is done through a six kind of steps, starting from the identification of requirements and going to the maintenance of the system. Right, so to elaborate this thing, I'm just using my whiteboard, right? So then I will be able to like draw some things for you to uh, understand. So now what we have to understand is if we want to develop a system, like think about that you have a project team, right? Or, or you are the head of a project team, right? So you have a particular team to take care of, right? And there will be more project members, right? with different kinds of skills. Some may be having uh, programming skills, some are having quality assurance skills, some will be having uh, and business analysis skill. There are many different ways. So now you yourself are given a chance or given the uh, opportunity of developing a student information system. student information system. So which is a system at the end of the day, right? So this system is requested by a particular client, right? Like uh, when it comes to the uh, project management or like the uh, uh, particular project, it is not being done by the uh, will of the project team, 
there will be a person who is handing over this work to the project team. So if this is the project team, this one is called the client, right? He is the one who is having the requirement, right? So when this is given to you, you and your project crew now given a task of creating student information system, right? Let's assume that he's having some here, right? Okay, so the task is to build up this student information system. And when a client come and give you a particular, like hand over a particular system to be created, it is because that particular client will be maintaining an organization which has that particular requirements, right? So in this case, it's kind of a school that he is maintaining, right? So that school is maintained by a student information system for the moment. They, they, they must have some kind of a system, right? At least they should record the data of the uh, students in a particular book, right? To keep the records of the students who are enrolled with them, right? So it should go through some particular way or like some particular system. For the moment, they are keeping the records, right? So this particular system called the existing system. Existing system, right? That means a system for the moment. And in most of the cases, like almost all of the cases, client will be uh, getting an idea about a new system. It is because there are some problems or some inefficiencies lies with the existing system, right? When the inefficiencies are lie with the, lies with the existing system, the client or the head of that particular organization or some particular person who carried out that work need that thing to be a little bit happening in a faster manner, right? Which will save them the time. So in that case, these kind of requests will be made to the project team to create some particular system, right? So this is going to be the practical scenario. So when the project team, when the project team is given the task of creating a system, what should the project team perform first? Yeah, what do you think? How they are going to have an approach to this system? what they should do. Can they just imagine a system and create it? Or how, what's, what's the way you think, how it is going to go? Yes, very good, very good. Very good, Sasrika and Pehara, they need to look after or like they need to understand how the existing system works. So what will happen is one of the project team member, right? One of the project team member or maybe one or maybe a team visit to the organization or, or to the particular place that the system is going on and will observe or we'll get to know about the system, right? So he is going to look at it, right? How this system is going to work, right? So this space of the uh, system is called identifying system requirements. Right, identifying system requirements. That will be the first space of the 
SDLC. So how they are going to identify the system requirements? So this particular person from the project team, right? He can do many different things. One thing, he can observe the system. Right? Yes. So he will visit the specific place and observe how the things are going to happen. Right? Then uh, when he is like observing, he can, he may recognize when a new admission is happening to the uh, school. Uh, they are they are providing a particular form to the uh, that particular uh, new student. They will fill it up and hand it over to the to them again, and they will uh, record in those details according to the details that they were received by the student, right? So then he can observe like how the uh, student registration are happening, which kind of uh, documents that are being involved, right? So likewise, he will observe the system then he can have the idea, right? As well as he can communicate with some of the people in the system already, right? And we'll have some talk with them, right? Which we call interviews, right? So, the team member or the project team member will have a chat with an employee of the organization. Then he can gather some details regarding that interview, right? So with that, he can have the uh, idea or the uh, he can identify the requirement of the system like what actually they need out of this project team right or else there will be uh, some particular documents like this right so these documents can be uh, referred by the project team member Right, and they will get to know what what is the way that they are uh, storing the data, what, what is the format that they are using, how many books that they are using to do this, uh, what is what is the existing system that is happening when uh, recording the details. Likewise, he can understand by referring to the documents, right, or else. After the interview that they have done, what they can do is they can create a particular interfaces or like we call it, no, these are not the actual ones. They can just draw and show. This is how the index is taken. This is how the name is taken. This is how the uh, address is taken, right? Then you will be given a button called enter or add. Right, so some kind of a prototype. So the project team can develop some type of a prototype and hand it over to the users and then ask, will this satisfy your requirement? Right, so in that case, they will look into that. And if they are, if, if it is satisfied uh, what they want, they will uh, give you that it is okay. Or if any amendments are need to be done, then they will show, tell you, okay, uh, there are some amendments to be done, these kind of things that need to be done, right? So likewise, the project team will be able to identify the system requirements as the first phase of the SDLC. People, is that clear? Right. 
Okay, let's put this into your books and then uh, we'll come to the other things. Okay, so. Yeah, OSIT me, prototype is like this doer. Now think about uh, an ATM system. When you are visiting to a ATM, uh, you got this uh, interface on in front of you. So the, so the common interface is like uh, it will be asking a particular pin from you, right? And through the keyboard, you can give any particular pin for this. So if we are planning this thing for the bank, we will draw something like this. It, it won't be the full and final interface that we are going to develop. It's just a prototype, a sketch, right? And we will uh, present it to the bank. This is the login interface or like the entering interface to your system. Is that satisfy your requirement? Something like that. Right, okay. All right, so yes, have the heading system development process. And yeah, you better uh, copy these two lines. Okay, so we are moving to the, yes, are we done people? Yes, anyone who is still writing? All right, so moving forward. have the subheading system development life cycle. Uh, people, uh, I'm sorry, it's better you say uh, this, phases of system development life cycle. Right, phases of system development life cycle. And under that, go with number one, identification of requirement. Then I will be highlight the things that you need to be written.
right? You may write these things. Then after we are going to go for the uh, explanation of the observation, interviews, and questionnaires kind of things. Right. Are we done? So I'm slowly moving downwards. So under that, you can write the observation. This should be written under that topic. People, I am moving downward slowly. If you miss anything, just let me know, right?
Okay, are we done? Okay, let me know when you are done, people. Okay, one is done. How about others? Right. So when I'm explaining, like I couldn't mention about the uh, questionnaires. Questionnaire is none other than like uh, this project team will create a particular form with a lot of questions, not, not actually the lot of, it's like some amount of questions, uh, which may have some uh, check boxes to tick regarding the questions. 
or like uh, some of the options will be given for you to choose, right? Or some short answers, questions will be there. So for that, from that kind of a document, again, the project team will be able to gather the requirements of the users regarding the particular system, right? So that is what we are doing with the uh, questionnaires, right? Okay, so after that, now we have done a lot of uh, observation part or like uh, the things to gather the uh, requirements, right? So once we gathered the uh, needed requirement, then the project team will be able to design a solution because through the requirement gathering process, they get to know what kind of a requirement that this client has and they analyze the existing system and they get to know about the existing system. Regarding that, they will uh, gather the requirements for a new system. And then based on the information that they have gathered, they are going to design a particular solution or design the solution, right? So in this stage, there are several things that they are doing, right? So. First, they will identify, identify the software and the software architecture that they are going to do, right? Then, as well as they are doing the user interface, right? Like I show it to you when, uh, uh, in the prototyping, they are like uh, having the user interfaces, right? And uh, now in, 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 this, in, the, in the designing phase, it is not a prototype that they are doing. They are like uh, designing the actual thing based on the requirements that they have gathered, right? And as well as they will identify the main hardware system and its components. Like if the, if the system is going to be established, it is not just a software that they need. So if they are creating a software, they need a particular uh, device to install it, right? So they get to know like what kind of a device or what kind of a uh, thing will help them to establish this uh, particular system, right? So they will determine whether this, uh, whether, uh, whether a particular mobile phone is just enough for the work or uh, do they need a laptop kind of a thing? Or like, uh, do they need any uh, particular uh, tablet devices or any, uh, if, if they need uh, to have a different, like large amount of data, uh, they may need a, a mainframe kind of a computer, right? So likewise, according to the requirement, they will, uh, define, they will identify what kind of major hardware systems that they need, as well as uh, the dependency of each subsystem. Like, like when it comes to the system, it is a collection of a lot of small systems, right? So like uh, if you think about the student information system, there will be attendance system, there will be an admission system, there will be the payment system. There are a lot of subsystems, right? So like they will identify how many systems are depends on each other, right? As well as deciding on the required hardware and software to run the system, right? So as they identify, first they identify what are the things that they need, then they decide what are the things that they are going to choose to run the system. So in that case, they will uh, figure out is there any additional software or like uh, uh, any particular needed software to be there to run the system uh, as well as regarding the hardware. Like as an example, uh, if you are creating a particular system, we always think about what kind of an operating system is going to support this, right? Like if you think about the Google Play Store, the things that is uh, there on the Google Play Store is for Android systems, right? Not for the uh, uh, Apple or Macintosh systems, right? Yeah, the, the things in the iStore, it is just for the Apple products, right? Not for the Android products. So likewise, when we are creating the system, we have to figure out what kind of a system and what are the additional softwares should be there and how these things are going to be cooperate with the system that we are creating. As well as they design the infrastructure for software, database and interfaces, right? So like uh, earlier they have gone with the user interfaces. And uh, uh, for a fact, they need to have a database very importantly, because when it comes to the system, storing a data is a vital part. 
So they have to create a particular database structure to capture the data that they want, right? And as well as very importantly, they also plan in the tests. The tests means you will, you will, you will figure out once the system is done, when the system is actually developed, it needs to be tested before it is handed over to the client. So in that case, there are several types of testing that we need to go through, right? So those tests will be planned in, in this design phase, right? So they, they have already what kind of test that they, they should run this particular system to figure out whether it is a bug-free system. Bug-free system means like error-free system. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, everyone. Are we clear with that? All right, great. Not now, so that is in a class after the class. After the class, so. Okay, so let's quickly take this down regarding the designing the solution. Um, you like you have to copy the entire thing, I guess, right? So go with the heading. Yeah, yes, you have to go with the uh, entire not people. So in that case, you have to go with these facts. Right, so let me know when you are done.
Okay, one is done. How about others? Okay, Sasweka, let me know when you are done. Yes, Sasrika, are we done? All right. Okay, so now, first we identified the requirements, then we design the solution. So once we design the solution, that means we have the plan on our hand. First we identify the requirements, then we plan it, now we have the plans on our hand. So now we can code our solution. Now coding means there are two types of coding that you need to do. First one is the interface coding, like, like you have to create your interfaces, right? All your interfaces to the systems, right? So there will be many different interfaces. So these interfaces can be created using a programming language, using the programs. And as well as you have to develop your database as well, right? In here, they are going to connect these interfaces with the database for you to exchange the data. Like you can save the data into it and you can retrieve the data from the database. So mainly using a programming language, we are creating the system using the database management system. We are creating the database, right? So once we are done with the uh, database, once we're done with the coding part, then we are going to test our 
system with the uh, to find any bugs are there inside the system so when you are testing the system you can remember we have planned the testing at the designing phase right here they have uh, planned the tests right so according to the planned test they are going to carry out the testing phase of the system so there are four different levels that they do the testing for a particular system right these are the four different levels that they are explaining unit testing integration testing system testing and acceptance testing now unit testing in the sense when you have planned your uh, system this system is having small units inside it right small small unit All right so that means program segments right so first of all what they are doing is so each and every programmer will create their own unit so these units will be tested individually that is what you call the unit testing so the program will be given a particular unit or maybe two to three units so the project manager or the uh, the team lead of the project will ask the programmer to test what he has developed right so the programmer he or she will test the unit that they have developed so these are called unit testing later these units will be integrated right some of the units can be integrated right not everything some of the units can be integrated so then they will integrate these units and will be doing the integration test right so if you think as a, as a simple example if you think about a bike bicycle foot bicycle as example there are units like handle bell seat chassis tires and all these things those are called units so when you are creating the system called bicycle first you are testing the units individually they check the handle is okay they whether they check whether the seat is okay they check whether the tires are okay and uh, are done so those are called the unit testing later uh, the back tire connected to the cog wheels using a chain and as well as with the paddles so then they will check once when it is being paddled whether that back wheel is going to rotate or not so in there several different components are integrated together and check for check whether those integration is working properly so that is what you call integration testing some of the units will be gathered together and will be test whether that integration is okay later what they are doing is they will connect all the components right with those integrated parts they will connect all the components and check the entire system which is called the system testing now when the system testing is done it is done by the uh, higher management of the uh, project team like the senior software engineers uh, like the uh, project managers right uh, senior developers will be involved in this and they will check whether the entire system is working working properly right and later the the system that they have built will be handed over to the client the one who bring the job to the project team and ask this client to check the system by itself by himself right so when the check in is done by the client or like the when the when the testing process uh, the testing process done by the client is named as acceptance testing so hara this is the last term sound right so that is what you call acceptance test so then in in this in this acceptance test it can happen like this right so the uh, wait, so how to do it right so the once the uh, client is tested the system he can give the okay 
to the project team by satisfying with the system and if he if he is not satisfied with the system as well as he can reject it will be a very bad moment for the uh, project team but uh, somehow in most of the project teams if the client is not satisfied with the system then they will negotiate and ask for the amendments that they need to do and they will come up with the amendments then they'll do an acceptance testing again and then later they are going to take the acceptance from the client so once the acceptance testing is passed then only they will be able to deploy the system in the organization and much importantly once the acceptance testing is done client will pay for the product right until then it is a cost of the project team right so in case if the client rejects the project then it will be a huge loss to the project team Eva, is that clear yes everyone is that clear right great okay so let's write about this thing right so let us start from here coding the solution Yes, write these two lines. Yes, Asrika, yes. Client will test the system first. If he is satisfied, then only he will pay the balance. So like, like when 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 the project team start the project, they will have a small advance, and the entire payment, the full payment, not the full payment, like most of the payment will be done when the acceptance test is done. So the full payment will be completed after the deployment process has happened. Uh, not actually Sasrika, because uh, the system check-in is done at the premises of the project team or inside a, a computer uh, which is given by the project team. So the project team has the uh, precautions, they have taken the precautions uh, to not to steal uh, the project or the software by the client, right? And client is not that uh, uh, like he, he will not go that bad right? because there are some agreements of how the things are going to happen. So it's, it's kind of illegal if he do something like that, then the project team can sue the client. Uh, so it will happen in a very smooth manner, right? He will not cheat on them, right?
Okay, are we done with this? Okay, so moving forward. Testing and debugging. So you can have this. Yeah. And write this as well. Oh, okay. We have uh, passed the time, but anyway, uh, it's better you mark this uh, on the book, people. So, since we have uh, talked about it, testing and debugging, uh, you may copy these things onto your book. And uh, it's better you draw this diagram as well at home and uh, yeah yeah you may get in a little big uh, homework at home so mark these things on your book paper just in and debugging and uh, you may write these two then draw the diagram as well as you have to write about this testing so that you need testing you don't need to write the example people only the things that I'm highlighting. So in case if you forget, you can refer the uh, recording and see what I have uh, mentioned you to write for this, right? So it's some simple steps that they have. So write about the testings. Mm, over here, let me see. Yeah, you had to go with the entire thing. Yeah, so that will be the uh, homework. So you have a, a particular table to be copied as well as you have to complete the note regarding the testing and debugging. So please mark it, draw the uh, this diagram as well, right? Then complete these things at home. Okay, so since it is passing the time, I'm going to end the session from here just for today, people. So by next week, we will be able to finish up the lesson, right? So if I got a chance, I'm going to move to the next lesson as well, right? Because there are very small part that we have to go through uh, regarding this lesson. So if we could get it done, then we, we can move to the uh, next lesson as well. Right. Okay, people. So thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you all next week for the very same time. Sasrika, I will answer your question. Hold on. Others, you can leave the session. No worries. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a very nice weekend.